The time has come, the oyster said, to speak of many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings, and why the sea is boiling hot and whether pigs have wings. Hello, hello, we'll eat today. Okay, well, the time hasn't come for oysters per se, but the time has come for another tutorial. It has been a while. And you guys are always tagging me and your beautiful artwork on all the social medias, but it's time for some new content so you can make something. And you know what we've never done before? Clouds. So today's the day. If you guys are interested in following along with this tutorial, I will link my Twitter below where you can download the reference image and my other social media accounts so you can tag me in anything. I am especially active on Instagram, so if you'd like to connect with me there, make sure you're following the links. Also, I'm filming this on Valentine's Day, so to any of you folks out home watching this, know that I'm sending you lots of love. I hope you guys enjoy this. Let's dive into some learning. Hello, welcome to the voiceover. Okay, the very first thing you were seeing me do here is a mistake. Don't do it. Starting off a tutorial well with a mistake. So of course you can do things differently, but this is my recommendation to you. I originally started this out with a drawing, just a loose reference of where things were, and I wanted to kind of start painting in with my bottom layer of acrylics. And over time, I realized this was not the approach I wanted to go for. Here's why. <laughs> I'm a big promoter of number one, blocking in your largest areas of color first, and then working your way up to smaller details and uh, number two doing just a background base layer of color just depending on the case and in this case it was definitely the route to go I would say so starting off I am skipping out on that painting around finagling and we're just gonna get a solid layer of color like I said I did do this with our acrylics because it is fast drying and I can work on top of it immediately. Next, I went in with some new pastels and I just did a quick sketch of the generalized shapes, got an idea of where my lightest areas were and some of those fades, and next I am going in with my oil paints. Now I have a lot of colors on there from just previous uses of my palette, but the actual main colors that I used throughout this process were titanium white, a French ultramarine blue, Mars black. These are the general colors I still Stuck with. I just created different blues and whites and grays. Big things I want you to pay attention to in this process are your light source. So as you can see, I kind of from the get-go blocked in where our silver lining areas were. The areas that are going to be hit with the brightest bits of white, that white that you are not mixing any color with, are the outer edges of that cloud shape. By not adding any other colors into there, you just get this really pure effect of the light hitting it directly. You want to kind of preserve that and as we go along this process I'm gonna make sure that stays pretty crisp, that outer edge. Whereas the other areas you're gonna see is a lot more fluffy, faded, blended. Something that I did to achieve this was A, working with oils because oils dry so slowly that you're able to get really nice gradients and continue to work back into it, blend things together. You can do blending while painting wet into wet and then also a favorite tactic of mine, going over the wet paint with a soft, fluffy, clean, dry brush to just blend things lightly together. The other thing I would recommend is having a medium present. When you're going to be working with your acrylic paints and you need to dilute something, you can easily go in with water, but with oil paints you're going to need something else since it is a hydrophobic paint, meaning that it repels water. So for my medium, I've said it before, I love liquid. A lot of people like linseed oil, things to pay attention to going on in our painting right now. As you can see, I really wanted to define our light to dark gradient. And like I said, you are paying attention to that light source, which would be coming from that upper left hand corner, which is why you have these bulges of clouds coming out that have the very outer edge with that silver lining and then moving down into a darker gradient. To make that effect apparent, what I did was had that pure titanium white and then I faded next to a mixture of a small amount of our ultramarine blue 
blue with our white and some Mars black. And then of course, the very darkest area has the least amount of white and the most amount of that blue and that black color. Be careful when you are mixing these colors. The more that you have a prominent amount of black and white, the closer to a gray tone you're gonna get with your colors. So if you need to avoid that, if you have to start over with your mixture, just do it. I'm a very thin painter and sometimes I make the mistake of not mixing enough paint up. But something I would recommend that I did around this point was I made a relatively sizable mixture of my blue, that really deep blue that was gonna be my overall tone that I wanted to be everywhere in my image. And then I was able to use it to create color consistency all throughout. You wanna pay attention to two different aspects of these clouds, both the crisp outer edge and then the really fluffy, light, translucent effect of some of the clouds in the lower section. As I'm working in that lower section, what I am doing is using ample amount of my paint and where needed, I am going in with my medium to kind of smooth things out. It's good to just kind of play it by ear, get a feel for the texture of your paint. If you are adding too much liquid, then you get away from all the nice pigmentation of the paint. But sometimes oil paints can have a bit of a tackiness to them, which is hard to work with. So that's when liquid comes in and is really helpful, just so you have good viscosity that your paint is able to move in the kinds of ways and textures that what you're looking for. Something really important to just proving the overall realism of your image is making sure that you are are really punching up your contrast. So you wanna make sure that you hit that white super hard and are keeping it really clean. The other thing you wanna do is make sure that you are texturing all throughout because even in those areas where you start getting a deeper gradient, you do have small areas of lighter colors where there is reflective light hitting different areas and it goes to prove the overall shape of the clouds. You don't wanna have anything look too flat by just having a singular color. You wanna go in and add little bits of white and because it is wet, because it is oil, you're able to do that and blend it a little bit later in the process. That's the thing I just love about oil is just how forgiving and workable it is. The other thing that is so important to me whenever I am doing a super realistic image is just making sure that I am using a really fine, nice brush. And when I get to that end, paying a lot of attention to my detail work, making sure that I'm doing really tight textured areas, adding little bits of light, those little dots of white, those little textures of that outer edge of our cloud. All of those things really tend to just amp up the realism. Going in with that white, I am also making sure that I am just getting really soft, nice wispy clouds in the background. I'm making sure I have enough lightness hitting my bottom cloud. Adding in small amounts of texture so that all throughout the cloud you can see that it has that puffiness. And then really a lot of this, it just comes down to you taking a good solid look at what you are painting and making sure you are getting the effects that you want. It is so important to at different stages of this take a step back, set it up on an easel or a ledge, walk away from it, get a better picture of how all your detail work is working together or if things are a bit strange or don't just sit right how you want them to. Get a pair of fresh eyes to look at it, see if they notice anything that you don't yourself or go to the restroom and just walk back and you might be surprised by what you find that you didn't notice before because we can get really engrossed with what we're looking at and kind of lose sight. Whenever I did that soft, clean brushing, and I do it at multiple stages, I make sure that I'm really just hitting the areas that I want to soften and being careful to preserve the harsh lines that are created with the silver lining, any of the internal areas where we have that gradient of shadow. Those are the areas that I want to keep soft and fluffy like clouds. Something that can be hard if you haven't done landscape before that I remembered from my initial times working with a landscape, if you are unfamiliar with the territory, it's hard to know just what to push, what your capabilities are, if you keep investing time or effort in certain areas, if it actually will improve the painting, or if you're just going to end up causing destruction and overworking it. But the final stage of pushing things around, making final tweaks, adding that extra boost of contrast in tiny details, smoothing things out with your dry brush, that is what really pushes your painting to 
you the edge and makes it its absolute best. And finding that balance for yourself is just something that comes with time, so be patient. Just in wrapping up, I want to emphasize that you make sure with this cloud you are paying attention to A, your light source. Make sure it is consistently coming in from that top corner and that you are hitting the sides of the mounds of your cloud with your brightest amount of white. Make sure you are hitting that and getting a crispness. The other thing is making sure that you create a gradient coming away from that crisp highlight to show that it is getting further from your light source and create dimension. After that, with that gradient, make sure you are adding back in light amounts of texture and using that clean dry brush to just really smooth things out and create the softness and remember what the texture of a soft cloud is. The next thing I want to make sure you are paying attention to is the overall composition. You are standing far away, you are getting a good look at it, you are measuring what is wrong and getting fresh eyes and perspective on it. Then next that you are paying attention to those details, that you are pushing it at that very last stage to make sure that your contrast is high enough and that you have those tiny minute bits of white in different areas, those tiny minute little strands of soft cloud. These things are going to be what really kills it at the end and just makes it look so realistic and beautiful. I hope that was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for new videos coming out every Friday. Make sure you are checking out those other video tutorials that I have made and my social media. Everything is linked below and I will have links for you in the end screen as well. Have a fantastic week, make some art, and I will see you next Friday. Bye.